You're listening to the Qur'an Tafsir, Understanding the Word of Allah, a podcast dedicated to explaining the Qur'an presented by various reliable scholars. This podcast is powered by Seekers Hub Global. Visit seekershub.org for online courses, our Q&A service with reliable scholars, and engaging media. مدبر الخلائق أجمعين باعث الرسل رحمة للعالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد It is a tremendous blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has gathered he gathered us all here on a Friday. And He has blessed us with gifts beyond measure. The gift of faith, the gift of life, the gift of guidance, and the gift of every good manifest and hidden. The gifts that we recognize and the gifts that we fail to recognize. Because how often, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, we may dislike something in our lives, yet Allah places in it tremendous good. And gratitude for Allah's blessings, being thankful is a key in life. It is the key to contentment. It is the key to happiness. It is the key to being satisfied. It is the key to being a faithful believer. It is a key to be driven towards one's ultimate good. And contentment and gratitude are two central qualities of all the prophets of Allah, mighty and majestic. All the prophets were tested in life. We see their stories in the Quran. They were rejected by their people. They were attacked and abused, mocked and derided, yet in their stories, which are truths that we see in the Qur'an, we see that they were ever content and they were ever grateful to Allah, mighty and majestic. So as believers, we should always be renewing this beautiful meaning of gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. The very shortest of surahs in the Qur'an Surah Al-Kawthar talks about this meaning of gratitude for Allah's blessings. Sometimes when we're feeling lazy, we recite the short surahs. Sometimes if you go to the masjid and the imam recites Surah Al-Ikhlas or Surah Al-Kawthar, or Surah Al-Asr, one of these very short surahs. Sometimes we almost feel cheated. You know, I took all this time to come to the masjid, and you want to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas for me? I could do that at home. And I've heard someone complain. You know, as people get older, they learn how to complain more colorfully. So once one of the elders said, I came all the way here, I'm elderly. And this is what you recite? And he was very upset. And of course, there is tremendous wisdom and guidance in these short surahs. The early Muslims would say, never say about anything of the Qur'an, a little Qur'an. Why? 
Because all of the Qur'an is great. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we have weak resolve, He has placed particularly concentrated meanings of faith and guidance and wisdom in the shortest surahs. Amongst them, of course, Surah Al-Ikhlas, which the Prophet ﷺ said, Surah Al-Ikhlas is a third of the Qur'an because of how much it contains of deep meanings. And likewise with the surah that we will reflect upon today, Surah Al-Kawthar. Surah Al-Kawthar is just three verses. A handful of words. Most of us, without doubt, know Surah Al-Kawthar. But how many of us have spent some time to reflect not only on what this surah means, but what it entails for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this amazing surah, إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ Truly, we have granted you the abundant good. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ So pray to your Lord and sacrifice. إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَى the one who derides you, they are the one who is cut off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna a'taynaka al-kawthar. Truly, it is we who have granted you al-kawthar, the abundant good. This is a statement of tawheed, of divine oneness. That the, good you, that the good you have in life, where is it from? It is all from Allah. قُلْ كُلٌّ مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ The most immediate meaning of course of Al-Kawthar is that it is a river in paradise. <coughs> Abundance is something that is frequently ascribed to a river because it's, the constant, it's constantly flowing. And this is one of the meanings of Al-Kawthar mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ. That it is a great river in paradise. But that was granted to the Prophet ﷺ. Other narrations mention that it refers to the pool of the Prophet ﷺ that flows forth from this mighty river that we drink from after the day of judgment before we enter paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us and our parents and our families and our loved ones and our communities of those people. Yet, this is not the only meaning. Al-Kawthar. Truly, we, we have given you Al-Kawthar. The direct address of the Qur'an, often, when it's in the second person, directly it is to the Prophet ﷺ. Inna, truly it is we, a'taynaka, we have given you, O Prophet ﷺ, al-kawthar, the abundant good. And very often, there's a specific meaning, but that is not the only meaning of it. One well, of the great Imams of Islam, Al Khatib al Shirbini, in his tafsir, Al Siraj al Munir, and many other authorities of tafsir have mentioned that here, while this specifically does refer to the river in paradise that feeds into the pool that we drink from as believers, may Allah make us of them before we enter paradise, but there is a wider, more general sense as well that is also true because 
every verse of the Qur'an has some application to all of us, directly or indirectly. It is not only talking to the Prophet Wasallam, it's talking to all of us, by extension. And Kawthar, which we translated as the abundant good, is from the Fu'al pattern. Kawthar, from Kathra, from abundance. And the pre-Islamic Arabs use this. One of them said about a man that you, you, are, you have much good. أَنْتَ كَثِيرُ الْخَيْرِ وَكَانَ أَبُوكَ كَوْثَرٌ You had much good and your father had abundant good. Meaning that you're a good guy, but remember that your, da- your father was great. Had كَوْثَرٌ a desert, one of the desert Arabs, an Arabi woman, an Arabiya, she'd lost her child in the desert and she went out looking for it. And if a child is lost in the desert, they're gone. There's no water, there's no shade. What's a child going to do? But after a while, she found the child and brought the child back. So someone said to this, this lady, Aba waladuki, your your child has come back, and she said, Aba bi khairin wa kawsar. He returned in good and kawsar, an abundant good. Right? So it has the sense of abundant good. Truly, we have given you the abundant good, and in that sense. It relates to all imaginable good, religious or worldly, in our lives. Truly, we have granted you the abundant good. The greatest possible good is the good granted the Messenger ﷺ. The greatest honor is that granted the Prophet ﷺ, and its manifestation is in paradise. And we aspire for the closeness to that good. We aspire to drink from the pool of the Prophet ﷺ, the hawl, before paradise. We aspire for paradise where rivers flow, but the greatest of the rivers of paradise is Kawthar, that amazing river granted the Prophet ﷺ, whose water is unbelievably sweet and unbelievably cool, unbelievably refreshing as described by our beloved Prophet ﷺ in authentic hadiths. Of course, in authentic hadiths. Someone said, why are you quoting an inauthentic hadith? I said, no, in an authentic hadith, right? People like picking on these things. It's established by hadith at the level of being mass transmitted. We have granted you the abundant good. Everything we have in our life is an abundant good. Especially if you consider that we didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve to exist. What right did you have before Allah created you for you to be created? None. He chose to create you. What right did you have to remain in existence? It is Allah who gifted you with that. What right did you have to be a believer? Allah has gifted you with that. What right did you have that Allah inspire you towards good in your life? For those of you who have spouses or children or wealth or all this facilitation, what right do we have to be right now? under a roof, sitting on a carpet. All of these are gifts from Allah. There are millions of refugees around the world. And the majority of them are Muslim. But every human soul, every living thing is precious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you consider the preciousness of life, Yet how much we are blessed with in comparison to other living things, that is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Inna a'taynaka al-kawthar. Truly, it is we, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have granted you the abundant good. Right? Good, abundant, beyond limit. Now normally, if you say, al-kawthar, we, it's translated typically as abundant good. But kawthar is from kathra. Like you say, kathir. We have, aban- we have granted you the abundance. But it doesn't specify the abundance of what? Because it is in every way. We have granted you abundance in everything. He has granted you abundance in everything. He has granted us abundance in our breaths. We have breaths beyond limit. And it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is we. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran uses the this emphasis, it is we who have it emphasizes the greatness and majesty of Allah. Inna, truly it is we. Right? Consider the greatness and majesty and perfection and mercy of the one who's granted you this. Right? And that's how we deal with the challenges of life. Look at who is sending you the good. Inna, a'tayna kal kawthar. And a'tayna. We have granted it to you, right? We've given it to you without you deserving it. It is not the consequence. The good in your life is not the consequence of what you have done. It's a consequence of the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu said, مَنْ وَجِدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ Whoever finds any good, let them praise Allah. إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ So we should of course look when we consider the good that the greatest possible good is the good granted the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That if we if we want good in our lives, we should seek of the good that Allah has granted the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this life of guidance and to aspire to the good that Allah has granted the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those who walk on the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in paradise. But what is the consequence of recognizing blessings? Recognizing the good in our life as being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ So pray to your Lord and sacrifice. So pray for your Lord. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ and this fa is of consequence that given that we have truly granted you abundant good, then pray to your Lord, pray for your Lord and give sacrifice. That gratitude has consequences. And if you're grateful, you want to give thanks. If, you know, if you go to someone's house, many people travel in the summer. You go and stay at a friend's house in Montreal. And when everything's done, you leave. And, and someone who's with you said, but you didn't thank your cousin. So, oh, I was very grateful. Did you say it? Did you express it in your words? Did you give a gift, a note of thanks? No, that's not gratitude. Gratitude is not just a feeling in the heart. Gratitude must be expressed. And gratitude must be expressed in the way appropriate to the gift. There's a difference between a small thing someone does for you. You, know, you, you dropped your cell phone, someone picked it up and gave it to you. You say, thanks, and you give a smile, and that might be enough. But let's say someone gave you their kidney. Would you just say, 
thanks and smile and that's it. No, you do much more. Someone helped you when in a situation where you're in debt. There's a friend of mine who when he wanted to marry, and this is 20 years ago, the in-law said, we insist on a hundred thousand dollar mahar up front. My friend was smart. He borrowed the money. I told him not to. I said, even if she has the best of akhlaq, and the greatest of deen, hundred thousand dollars, this is like in the late 90s, it ain't worth it. But he went ahead. But he was smart. He made the payment and his wife had agreed to refund 80,000 of it. And she actually ended up refunding 90,000. And they used it as down payment, down payment for their house. Right? Everything has the requisite gratitude. Someone gave you great assistance, you would express gratitude according to what they did for you. They were there for you. But inna a'atinaka al-kawthar, truly it is we, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have granted you the abundant good. Every good that you have is from Allah. Your life itself is from Allah. Fasalli li Rabbi. So pray to your Lord. From, from this verse. And many other texts of the Qur'an and Sunnah, the ulama tell us that the underlying wisdom behind the obligation of prayer is gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukrul mun'im, being expressing gratitude to the bestower of blessings. Fasalli li rabbika. Which is why sometimes we start slackening off with respect to our prayers. Whether in performing them, that we find we're struggling to pray five times a day. Or the sunnah prayers have started slipping a little bit. You used to do tahajjud, night vigil prayer, regularly or sometimes. And it's slipping. You used to pray salat al-duha. This amazing gift from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to pray two or more rak'ahs after the sun has risen. And it's come in hadith Qudsi that, oh my servant, take care of two rak'ahs for me at the beginning of your day, referring to the duha prayer, and I will take care of the rest of the day for you. But we find these things slipping. Sometimes we focus only on the direct reasons. Oh, I need to take a longer break at work. Um, I need to get a better alarm. But there is an underlying spiritual means that we need to take anytime we find prayer slipping in our life. Whether performing the prayer, you're struggling to pray five times a day. You know you, 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 you need to, but you struggle to. Or you become neglectful or slack, or your prayer isn't like it was back in those days. Work on your gratitude. <inaudible> Truly it is we who have granted you abundant good, so pray to your Lord. Right? So you nurture that meaning, renew your gratitude, spend time reflecting on the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And if you nurture that gratitude within, you will find that expressing that gratitude through prayer will be much easier. Similarly, we see often parents who struggle to get their children to pray. Now, sometimes parenting becomes a bit of a stressful, a bit of a stressful job. Because sometimes we imagine that we're the judge. Wrong, no, 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 right? Sometimes we feel we're, we're, we're like the police. We, we, we're handing out tickets to our kids. Fine for this, fine for that, jail for this, like, you know? Some, sometimes it's like a boxing match with the kids. Not physical boxing match, but verbal boxing match. 
But the Prophet ﷺ said, each of you is a shepherd. And each of you is responsible for their flock. One of the ways to nurture the resolve, the concern, the interest, the drive within our children, just as it's within ourselves, within our children, within people, within our families that we want to, to, to do the right thing, whether, it, whether it's prayer or sticking to the halal, avoiding the haram, whatever the challenge it may be. Sometimes just telling them, pray, pray, pray. The subtext is, why? The, the key thing to do is to nurture gratitude. Because if you can convey the sense and nurture wisely, appropriately, gradually, the sense of, inna a'tainak al kawthar Truly, it is we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have gifted you with abundant good. If you can nurture that meaning, which is hard to deny, that is the meaning of faith in the hearts of your children, in the hearts of people. Then if they have gratitude in, the, in their heart, then directing them towards prayer, encouraging them towards prayer will come much, e much more easily. And that's what drove the Prophet ﷺ when he prayed at length at night. So much that his feet would swell in pain in his later years. And many a companion asked, Ya Rasulullah, why do you do this? When Allah has lifted from you all sin, past and future, you're a prophet, the most honored servant of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا shakura." Should I not be a servant who is truly grateful? Right? Because if Allah has granted you al-kawthar, Abundant good, the right response is complete gratitude. Fasalli. So pray. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points to Fasalli li Rabbika. So pray for your Lord. Very often we get up to pray, but it's just we pray because we have to. No, don't pray because you have to. Pray for your Lord. Fasalli li Rabbika. Who are you praying to? And Lord, Rabb, is the Rabb, is the one who takes care of the affairs of his servants. He's the one who protects them. He's the one who nurtures them. He's the one who cherishes them. So pray to your caring, compassionate, loving Lord, one heart, and sacrifice, whether that be the Udhiyah or, or give of your wealth, of your concern, for the sake of your Lord. So pray for your Lord. So when we stand to pray, these are two, two meanings that we nurture. Gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then we do it for His sake. The Sahaba realized this when they... When they're building the masjid together, they said, Allahumma lawlaka mahtadayna. The Sahaba sang poetry and we have it in the seerah of Ibn Hisham and the other great works of seerah. They were singing poetry as they built the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. وَلَا تَصَدَّقْنَا وَلَا صَلَّيْنَا O oh Allah, were it not for you, we would not be guided. And we wouldn't give in charity, nor would we pray. Right? This is what drove the Prophet ﷺ to greatness. What drove the Sahaba to greatness? It is gratitude. Inna a'tainak al kawthar Fasalli li rabbi. Do it for Allah out of gratitude. Inna shani'aka huwa al abta. Truly the one who mocks you, who derides you, they're the one cut off. Don't worry about the Islamophobes. Don't worry about the haters. Don't worry about the bullies. A lot of our children are dealing with bullies. Rather, worry about your Lord. How? Reflect on the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. The abundant blessings of Allah. And then, make prayer happen in your life. 
Pray with sincerity. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ شُكْرًا right? Out of gratitude to Allah. Give of your wealth and your time and your concern for your Lord. Seek Allah in life. Make Him your concern. And if you make Him your concern, He will take care of you. So what do you do with the shaliq, with the Islamophobe? Don't worry about them. Your Lord will take care of them. You worry about how you respond to them in لِرَبِّكَ For the sake of your Lord. How do you respond to them? Beautifully, wisely, mercifully. إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ Respond in a way that is better. But don't, don't be moved and driven in life by them. Focus upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'll find contentment and abundant good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who reflect on the ocean of meanings that is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us of those who reconnect with that life-giving water that is the Qur'an. May He nurture by the water of this guidance the life of faith and the faith of life in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. And may we be driven through that faith to gratitude and to abundant good. وَهَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ And is the consequence of good anything but good. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى that He make us of the people of Quran those who give the Qur'an, some time in our lives, who nurture good in our lives by pouring of this life-giving water that is the Qur'an into the ground of our lives and our conscience. Have some time each day when you recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have some time each day when you recite the book of Allah. Strive to keep a copy of the Qur'an with you. The majority of us probably have smartphones. A smart thing to do on your smartphone is get a Qur'an app. Many people find it difficult to keep a copy of the Mus'haf. If you can, that's great. But if you don't, or do both. And in those moments in your life, when your inclination would be to go to Facebook, face the book of Allah and read a few verses ponder on even one verse of the Quran its marvels never cease you will always find that if you turn to the Quran sincerely anytime you open the Quran and ask any of our respected elders and we have many such people right in this audience that have you ever opened the Quran and reflected on it, except that whatever you open, you'll feel it is talking directly to you because this is the address of the Creator to every single one of His creation. So open the Qur'an and bring that water that will bring your life to true life. By which Allah says we will truly give them the good life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nurture that in our hearts. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala abdika wa nabiyika wa habibika Muhammad wa alihi wa ashabihi wa atba'ihi ila yawm al-deen. Allahumma khfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat rabbana innaka qareebun sami'un mujibu al-da'awat ya arhamar rahimeen ya arhamar rahimeen ya arhamar rahimeen ya arhamar rahimeen اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن واجعل واجعله لنا إماما ونورا وقائدا إلى الخيرات اللهم اجعلنا لك من الشاكرين اللهم إنا نشكرك 
على نعمة الإيمان ونعمة الحياة ونعمة الهداية وكل وعلى كل نعمة أنعمت علينا ظاهرا وباطنا يا رب العالمين والله we thank you for your gifts beyond measure we ask you that you grant us true gratitude we ask you that you make us of those who pray for your sake who bring the five prayers into our lives as an expression of gratitude as an expression of love sincerely striving to express gratitude for everything that we have blessed us with we ask you that we always renew our gratitude that when we feel tested in our own lives when we feel tested by what's around us that we reconnect with you and we reflect on your blessings and that we strive for your favor and that we have the complete sense of your protection for you are the one who takes care of those who turn to them ya rabbal alamin allahumma arhamna wa arham ummata sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allahumma ansurhum wa ayyidhum wa ahfadhhum wa adfa anhum sharr sharr ahli sharr wa la taj'al fitnatahum fi ad-din wa ansurhum ala a'daika ya rabbal alamin wa ruddana wal muslimina ilayka shukran wa wa mahabbatan ilayka ya rabbal alamin ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما وصلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد النبي الشاكر الذاكر واله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين واقيموا الصلاه Thank you for listening to the Quran Tafsir Understanding the Word of Allah Help Seekers Hub give light to millions around the world by becoming a monthly donor at seekershub.org/donate Your donations are tax deductible in the US and Canada